Today's adventure with the McLaren 12C will involve replacing the hydraulic accumulators. On the 12C, the two front accumulators are mounted directly to the pump. You see here, this is for the passenger side and that's for the driver's side. On the rear, which I will show a bit later, is hooked to a line going to each rear shock. So I have to remove a rear, a rear wheel, the wheel liner, and then you'll see the accumulator. The reason why they need to be changed is it's a wear item. It does degrade over time. I don't show any record on the service history from McLaren Tampa and Atlanta where the car has been previously serviced that the accumulators were ever replaced. Nine and a half years tells me they're most likely due for replacement. I do still get a good ride quality. I can tell a big difference between normal, sport, and track. Typically when one or two of these accumulators blows out, you have a uh, greatly reduced ride quality to the point where the car feels like it's just completely stuck in track mode. I don't have that. I do on occasion feel a slight little stick or a dead spot in the steering. Uh, research into that has uh, revealed that one or two dead accumulators will cause that because the pump is kicking in and out intermittently to compensate for a flat accumulator and it's causing that weird dead feeling in the steering. Here's what a new accumulator looks like. I haven't looked closely on here to see if there's any kind of a date code. I'd really like to know if there is, why well, I can date the ones currently on the car. So there's a really long string of numbers here. There could be some sort of a date code in there. I doubt it. I do have some obvious information here, the volume. This is designed to hold 0 0.08 liters and the pressure at 60 bar. Simply removing one accumulator at a time. Being quick about it, there will be some fluid leak out, more so on the front than the rear. Thread the new one in, go to the other side, do the same. And then with the rear, repeat the process. Suspension of full droop, replace accumulator, left and right. Lower the car back down after all four have been replaced. Open the reservoir cap, add fluid as it will definitely be lower. For one, you have a little bit of loss from removing each accumulator and then also there's going to be fluid going into it to fill the new accumulator which is going to be empty. The process after that is put the battery back in, start the car up, and then you rotate the steering wheel lock to lock, so you're gonna go left side, right side, lock to lock 10 times to vent any air out of the system. It is a sealed system, but like any other power steering system, it does self bleed. Power steering fluid is shared with the suspension since this, this is a complete hydraulic system. Now here again, this is a relatively new procedure that I've been hearing about. I haven't proven if it works on my end. I've read about several success stories. It does not trip any kind of a service code, warning light. Uh, the car actually drives much better. Uh, there are some cases where if there is a bad shock, it won't completely correct the problem the owner is having with their car. I've inspected my shocks very closely. There are, there are no external leaks that I can see. That's not to say that there might be something internal going on. but. Then again, my car rides exceptionally well between normal, sport, and track. Very big difference in all the ride settings. I just notice an occasional, what I call a dead spot or a weird little catch in the steering, which makes me suspect that one, if not both of these front accumulators are either weak or just completely flat. All right, I've changed the front two, and here's what I learned. I learned that the passenger side, which is this one, had no pressure. Once you release it, I uh, knocked it loose, unthreaded it, just 
couple drips of fluid came out, no big deal. The driver's side, however, was under a bit of pressure. Nothing extraordinary, you know, nothing dangerous, but you do want to make sure you have eye protection and gloves on. And uh, it coated this area with quite a bit of fluid, not a problem, just hose it down with 91% isopropyl alcohol, wipe it all off, you're good to go. So what that tells me, the passenger side, no pressure. Driver's side had pressure. Passenger side was flat, blown. The diaphragm inside of it had failed, and that would explain why, after the car would sit for a day or so, this wheel was tucked a little bit tighter to the wheel well, wheel well than the driver's side. I suspected maybe it was a shock. The shock wasn't leaking. Typically the easiest, cheapest solution is to try the accumulators and seeing that it's definitely blown, that would explain why that shock was settling a little bit. Start the car up, it would pressurize and it would compensate for the lack of pressure between both sides. In addition, I was able to notice when you look down inside, you can see part of the diaphragm. On the blown one, you can't. It looks to be bottomless. So I took a gauge. Now granted, this is not putting any pressure on it. So I took this, bit of a gauge. And you can see it sits in here a little bit. Now this is my old one. This is the one that was on the driver's side. And let's compare that to the one that was on the passenger side. You can see it falls in. That's because the diaphragm, the nitrogen charged diaphragm inside of here has failed. So it's no longer providing any of the dampening control that it was originally designed to do. Now, I'm not pushing on anything in here. This is just simply sitting in here its own weight. I did mark a little line so that I could better gauge how deep it was in there. This is a good one. I'm gonna mark this with a G. I'm gonna put it back in the box and I'm gonna keep it as a spare. I am gonna proceed with replacing the two rear ones while I'm at it. With the rear wheel and wheel liner removed, you can now see where the rear accumulators are located on the 12C. Now, judging by this little factory mark, this little index mark, it's safe to say that this is an original accumulator to the car. This car was built January of 2012. That makes this accumulator, along with the two removed on the front, nine and a half years old. I don't know of too many cars have an accumulator last more than a few years, let alone nine and a half years. So that tells me this car has obviously been very well cared for to not have an accumulator blow out any time prior to my servicing and replacing them. I just finished replacing the driver's side rear accumulator. It was not under pressure. Anytime you work with a system like this, you want to take care, safety glasses. I had towels draped over everything and then even had a rag over the accumulator anticipating some pressurized fluid to shoot out. It was not under pressure. A quick inspection of the original accumulator. You can see down inside of here. I don't know if you can with this angle. This one's good. So out of the three I've replaced, two of them are still good. You can see my little depth gauge here. It's not collapsed. I'm gonna box this up and mark that it's still good. And I'll date it so I know when I replaced it. I do keep a detailed service history. But just for a quick, easy reference, the box will be marked when I put it on the shelf. The fourth and final accumulator has been replaced. There's the old one. Boom, look at that. So both passenger side accumulators were blown. I, I just can't imagine how much of an imbalance this was causing in the handling on the car. Even though the car felt great, and there is an obvious change between normal sport and track. To have two accumulators blown on one side could not have been good. 
also here, nice little note from my girlfriend. <laughs> After replacing the accumulators, of course, due to fluid loss, you will need to top the system off. The service manual states to use a CHF202. I've been told by several and also read on forums that the 11S is a much better fluid to go with. It is cross compatible with the factory fill 202. And you can pick this up at most local auto parts stores such as AutoZone or O'Reilly. I picked this one up from AutoZone. It is not cheap. I think this is almost $30 for this one liter can. You won't need all of it. You should only need about half of that. The system fully topped off from dry, according to the manual, I think it's around one and a half liters. And since I had two blown accumulators, that did take up a lot of the volume in the system. So it's important to have this on hand when you do the accumulator replacement. So I just uh, fired it up and uh, rotated the steering wheel from lock to lock five to six times, double checked the fluid level at the reservoir, topped it off, fired it up again, and lo and behold, I now have variances in how the car sits from normal normal sport and track i didn't have that previously uh, and i had been told that if the system's working properly when you change from normal to sport the car will raise uh, the ride height just a little bit and now when i cycle through the three ride settings i get an obvious change in the ride height i can feel it no fault codes of any sort. I still need to test drive, but for all intents and purposes, this looks like a very straightforward repair. It didn't really involve a whole lot in terms of replacing the accumulators. Uh, you do have to be careful, exercise, safety precautions, eyewear, handwear, uh, when you're dealing with uh, high pressure hydraulics, there is always that potential of an injection injury, and those can in some cases be lethal. So the next step for me is to take this thing for a test drive. So I took the 12C for a test drive after changing the four hydraulic accumulators and it drives like a brand new car. It's amazing the difference. I thought it had a good ride prior, not knowing that I had two blown accumulators and the suspension was really only doing half of what it was designed to do. It's phenomenal how much smoother it is. And also gone is that weird occasional catch and dead spot I had in the steering. No fault codes whatsoever, no weird warnings. It's a very simple repair, in my opinion. Uh, if you were to ask any McLaren dealer or tech, they'll tell you it's extremely involved and uh, requires special equipment. To the level I did this, it's not totally required. Now, a shock's a different story. If I replace the shock, which would effectively down near uh, drain the entire system, yes, that special bleeding tool would be needed. But in the case of just doing the accumulators on their own, doing it quickly to minimize fluid loss, it's an easy job. I think any McLaren owner with any mechanical ability or sense could easily pull this off. I'm not saying you should do it, I'm not taking any responsibility for any work anyone does to their own car. I do appreciate everyone out there who has been following me and thank you for watching.